Okay. Um, let's see if you guys have... <sighs> okay. okay, perfect! Sweet, okay. All right, so Eulalia, Eulalia, if you could just uh, confirm for me that you hear background music and you hear my voice, that would be perfect. Um, basically, what happened was my, I think the my headset's um, driver kind of crapped out on me, so I had to reinstall it by plugging it into a different USB port because, of course, <laughs> and then um, I had to reset all of my defaults back. Uh, so, I'm pretty sure it should be fixed now, and I believe we should be good. Um. Okay, cool. Alright. Perfect, you can hear everything. Okay. So, this is a game called Seduce Me. It is a Otome visual novel. These five shadows here are these five kind of main guys that we have to romance. Um, this is a game created by Seraphim Entertainment, which is run by an incredibly sweet girl named Michaela Laws, who you guys might know as the voice of Yandere Chan and Yandere Simulator. Um, you can get this game for free if you're interested in playing it, and the the sequel, Seduce Me, Seduce Me 2, The Demon Wars, um, just recently came out on Steam. I kickstarted it happily. I was happy to throw money at them because this game's super fun. And I've been really playing around with the idea of doing this for a while, and I just figured, you know what? Why not do it now? Um, this is going to be a little different than Asagao Academy in the way that it is fully voice acted. So, um, I'll be speaking the main character's thoughts, but like all of the other characters that are going to have their own voices. Um, so if there's something weird, like if the, if the sound of the voices and whatnot is, is too low or something, I'm going to have to look into that, but let me know if you have any issues. Oh, you played one of Michaela's games before? She's amazing. She is super talented. Okay. So we're going to start a new game. Okay, this is a fictional interactive narrative. Any character resemblances to real life people are purely coincidental. By the way, this is all about, um, this is all about, uh, this is, this is all, uh, this is all on, um, Renpai, which is the same platform that Asagao Academy was named on, so I'm gonna have the same problems trying to stream this as I did Asagao Academy, so that should be fun. Um, uh, this is a big thing, you guys. The following game is made for PG-16 audiences. There are sexual and violent themes explored in this game. There is nothing explicit. There is no explicit visual blood or gore. There is no explicit visual sexual content or any sexual sounds or anything like that um i'm very confident that this is totally twitch safe i think that you guys should be totally fine with it but there are some very adult themes um you know kidnappings and um you know that kind of stuff so if you're uncomfortable with it please feel free to say so and um you're more than welcome to you know step out of the um of these streams or not watch these videos but um this is the kind of game that we're going to be dealing with it's a little more risque than asagao academy you guys um because these guys are not just demons they're incubi so we're gonna have some fun with this game please enjoy why hello my aren't you a gorgeous sight can i be honored enough to know your name ah that's my favorite character in the game that voices that, by the way. The voice actors they got for this are incredible. <laughs> You're mentally 12, what can you do? Oh, Eulalia, I'm thoroughly convinced that you can handle this. <laughs> this should be itchy. Yeah, you heard his voice and now you're like, hmm. Okay, so I guess I should put my name in. I think that I feel like that's kind of weird. I don't know. But I guess I'll do that for now. Mmm, a lovely name. For a lovely person like you. Wonderful. Eric, do your job. <laughs> Very well. <clears throat> this game was produced by Seraphim Entertainment under the direction of Michaela Laws and is powered by Renpai Visual Novel Engine. We truly hope you'll enjoy this story. I know I'll enjoy it, since you'll be in it. Eric, 
Fine, fine. <laughs> Farewell, my sweet. Eric is my favorite character in the game, by far. He is a clown. <laughs> Somewhere. Oh! Come on. Is that all you got? Wanna try me, asshole? Crap! Missed. Let's retreat for now. No kidding. Let's get out of here. That's right. You better run, you stupid punks. Stay out of our territory. The damn kids better get off my lawn. <laughs> Wait, you guys, until we meet that character. Because let me tell you something. He is... He is... He is a character. Yeah. He is a character. Okay, so okay, here we go. Yeah, the the voice actors are great. They're not um, I, they've done I think a couple of big things, but some of the voice actors are, are mainly like smaller voice actors. But man, did the voice actors do a phenomenal job on this game! And there is a female character that we'll be meeting later that Michaela voiced herself, who is absolutely phenomenal. And if you've seen gameplay of Yandere Simulator and heard Yandere Chan's voice. Michaela also did Yandere Chan's voice, so you already know at that point. Um, you already know at that point that that is um, it's, it's gonna be amazing because she's so talented. Okay, call it fate or call it coincidence. That moment, one moment of violence started a chain of events I will this never formula. forget. Created in the 70s is one of the most important in the field of financial theory. I have to remember to finish my line before I click to the next one because the stuff's voiced in this one and I'm gonna wind up running into everything. Oh. Oh god, the laptop's dying again. Story of my life, you guys know this. Here we go. Yay! Okay. <clears throat> It is used to calculate the price of European style options and is widely used by option marketers. Though there are some discrepancies that are now corrected with the modern viewpoint. Rain. It's been a long time since we've gotten rain around here. But it is the season for rainy weather, so it's not exactly that surprising. Personally, I loved the sound of it. The way the raindrops fell, like the soft tapping of fingers. It was so soothing. Even looking at the droplets hit the glass of the window, uh, hitting the glass of the window was strangely calming. Yeah, Yandere Simulator's amazing! For this reason, I felt lucky for having a seat next to the window, though I did spend more time staring outside than I did paying attention in class. Very anime thing to do. The lectures in class were pretty boring. Mrs. Phillips's voice wasn't so horrific, but I just wasn't interested in what she was saying. And since it was the period right before lunch, all I could think about was doing other things in my free time. Honestly, I don't really care much for economics. Sure, I had good grades in this class, but it was only because I read the textbook and did my assignments as I had to. I, would o I was only taking this class because it was mandatory. If it were up to me, I would probably have taken another course. Luckily, it was my senior year, so after that semester, it would mean the end of high school courses forever. Thank God for that. I didn't hate high school. It was just kind of mundane how the days drifted on and on as if there were no end to it. The only thing I really enjoyed about going to school was meeting my friends and hanging out with them, but that was kind of it. In short, I was done with high school. The start of second semester brought a note of finality to it. I'd already applied to many universities the semester prior, and I was expecting replies sometime in the next few months. It seemed like the start of something new. Something that would change. That is, if things could change. I stared at the faint outline of raindrops in the distance. For now, I was stuck in this class. I like the main character in this game. She's pretty cool. Miss Anderson. Oh, there's Mrs. Phillips. Mrs. Phillips' voice, voice interrupted my train of thought. Just when I was thinking about class. I quickly turned my head to face the teacher. Hopefully she didn't pick me just because she noticed I was spacing out. Um, yes, ma'am? Would you care to name the equation I set up on the blackboard? Oh, I think I read about that in the textbook last night. It should be... The Black-Scholes model formula? Very good as always, Miss Anderson. 
Anderson. It followed me wherever I went. Most people didn't really know me by my first name, but rather by my surname. This is where the reason why they don't say the, you know, you can input the first name. So this is the reason why everybody calls the main character Anderson. Uh, because you can input the first name. So this is kind of the reason why. No doubt since the surname was the trademark of the internationally famous and philanthropic Anderson Family Toys, and because the founder was my own grandfather. So, unlike <laughs> uh, Asagawa Academy, we're playing a character that actually is rich and is, <laughs> and is a member of a rich family. Suzu, one of my best friends, turned around and proudly gave me a punch to the shoulder. Kick ass, girl. Suzu is a blast. You you guys are going to love her. This is not going to be a blind playthrough like um, Asagao Academy was, by the way, you guys. Because um, I've played through all the five main routes in this game twice over. There's three smaller routes I haven't done yet. But yeah, so I know what's going to happen in this game. So it's going to be a little different. Sky Sweet! Oh, so cool! Thank you for coming to join me! If you guys don't know Sky Sweet, um, I found her on Twitter. I saw her liking my videos on YouTube of JonTron's route. And um I was hoping that you might stop by someday and I'm so excited that you did. Welcome to the Choo Choo Club. Hold on. It's bot time you guys. It's bot time. Yeah, welcome. Thanks so much for joining me. From beside me I heard Naomi, another one of my best friends, clearing her throat in a an obvious disapproval of Susie's choice of words. <clears throat> she means good job. And by the way, in case you guys are wondering, there are the two, two of the three of roots I have yet to do are Suzu and Naomi. Unlike the tease we get with mine, Asagao Academy, our two female best friends are romanceable in this game. So if you guys are interested, I'll go through those. I've never gone through those before. Those will be totally blind for me. Um, but I've gone through the five main ones. So, but yeah, and this one we can actually romance our female best friends. Thank you, Michaela. <laughs> Yes, welcome to the club. Oh, well, I, I hope it was fine just chatting with me, you lately. I know it's much more fun when the chat is all hyped up, but I didn't expect a lot of people to stop by today because it's Father's Day, but... Miss Capini. Oh, uh-oh. Oi! <laughs> She's just like, what? <laughs> Care to tell me who the creators of this formula were? Uh, some guys named Black and Scholes. Beautiful job, Suzu. A+. plus. <clears throat> Fisher Black and Myron Scholes. Well, I mean, Susan wasn't wrong, Naomi. Look at look at that face. You don't have to be so goddamn snarky about it. Very good, Miss Patterson. Show off. Better study next time, Suzu. Be like us and study once in a while. Susan rolled her eyes and slouched into her chair as Naomi gave her a small smirk. She always patted when Naomi showed her up. That's the end of today's lecture. Now, let's separate into groups and work on your projects. Remember, everything is due on Monday. Go ahead now. Oh, it's not Father's Day over there where you are. Yeah, I think Father's Day happens in, at different times in different countries. But here in America, today is Father's Day, so... Before I knew it, Suzu and Naomi had scooted their desks to align with mine, and we turned into the Three Musketeers. Whenever the teacher let us students decide on groups, we always grouped together in our little trio. It was sheer stroke of luck that we all managed to be in the same class, so we had to at least take the opportunity and stick together as much as we could. Besides, we were most comfortable around each other than, say, compared to being around any other classmate. It just made sense for us to put our heads together for any kind of project. I took out the poster we were working on and rolled it open onto three desks. We were pretty much finished with fulfilling most of the guidelines for this project, though we still did have to add a few finishing touches here and there. After working on making the poster a bit prettier, we sat back and expected our work to see what we still had to do. Naomi, as usual, was the first to look for any issues. She lightly tapped a pencil against her chin, staring intently at the project. Alright, so let's see. We finished the budgeting section, the building leasing, and the cost for labor. What else do we need? Susu straightened up to look at the poster, then stroked her chin. After a few seconds, her face brightened up and she spoke. How about a company name? Huh? Did we really skip over that? Oh, God. Of course we did. You always go straight into the logical statistics and stuff that you completely skip over the fact. We need a name for our project. Ugh, at least we caught it this time. 
What do we name it? Hmm, not sure. What do you think? It always came down to me. Whenever there was something to be named or titled, I was the master and ending decision, even when I didn't want to be. I like Trinity Corporations. Okay, it's not a bad name. That is way too predictable. How about the Dragon Company? That's pretty badass. What I do love dragons. dragons have to do with our project? What? It's a totally unpredictable name. It's hot. But our company sells bubble gum. Who said we can't produce spicy bubble gum? <laughs> spicy bubble gum. <laughs> <sighs> what do you think? Yeah. What do you think? Both of them looked at me expectantly, even though I wasn't quite sure myself. I didn't want to choose size, but if it were up to me, I would say... Alright, and here's our first decision of the game. So, just kind of, kind of like the way that um, Paul and Jared's decision was between the fashion show and the student council being more important. Obviously, if you would want to romance Suzu, you would choose the Dragon Company. If you wanted to romance Naomi, you would choose the Trinity Corporation. Um, but we're not going for any of these guys yet. We're going for the, the real meat of, the, of this game, the five main... Um, the five main romanceable characters who we have yet to meet, so... Uh, uh, I'm just gonna pick one. I like Dragon Company. Booyah! Dragon Company it is! Alright, now that we've decided on a name, now what? As we ended our name game, a giggle scrambled my thoughts. <laughs> Oh, this is Lizette. Yeah, this girl. Hey, guys, do you remember how we used to tell Mimi to stay in her damn lane? Welp, we've got someone new to pick on. <laughs> huh? Who is that? Ignore it. It's just Lizette. It's just Lizette. <laughs> I looked over my shoulder to see her laughing with her circle of friends, mostly comprised of popular people that were practically friends with everyone in the school. As a res uh, and as a result, everyone in the school knew them. In the center of it all was Lizette White. She sat with a posture that indicated she was still working, but that she also was ready to casually chat about her day. She had an endearing balance of charismatic and awkward, which was readily apparent when she first talked to someone. It was easy to make her smile and laugh, and she was quite the comedian as well. Basically, she was perfect. And not that she was like a robot or something, but she was the student that everyone else wanted to be. Lizette was bright, easygoing, and above all, had her future laid out right in front of her. Unlike the average student, she knew what she wanted to do after high school, and as a result, she was confident and ambitious. Though sometimes it could rub a lot of people the wrong way. Now, I think we'll probably like Lizette more than Mimi, but, you know, this is definitely stay in your damn lane territory that we're getting into. <laughs> Moreover, I had known her ever since I was young, but it had ultimately resulted in a rivalry that continued today. So, yeah, so it's probably more not so much like between Hana and Mimi as it was between Mai and Mimi, where it's like, we've known her for a while and we kind of just don't like each other and that's sort of what's going on, you know? Of course, my friends knew what was between us and upon seeing me glance at her, they shifted their attention to her. She doesn't even look like she's working, in my opinion. She probably is, but she's too much of a stuck-up priss to allow herself to look like she's actually doing work. Oh, come on, Suzu. She may be a little off-putting. But she's not the giant priss that you're making her seem to be. The day she isn't a priss is the day I turn into you. What's that supposed to mean? Never mind. <laughs> oh, the bickering. It's about time. Let's bail. Woo! And there she goes! She's off! <laughs> Unsurprisingly, Susie was the first out of the classroom, slinging her backpack over her shoulder with ease as she quickly strolled out the door. Her seat isn't even closest to the exit, and she always manages to be the first one out of the door. I don't think I'll ever understand that. Uh, she's not a fan of school. Uh, okay, so uh, obviously if we, you know, again, this is choosing sides. Um, well, let's, let's, let's balance that a little bit. He'd say, me and you both, Naomi. She gave me a smile, as if relieved by the fact that I felt the same way she did. See? Why can't she just be normal like the two of us? I don't know about normal. You don't know how weird this game gets, girl. 
<laughs> it's Suzu. Na it's uh, it's Suzu Naomi. Think about it. Very true. <laughs> Man, you guys are slow. Are you coming or what? We heard you the first time. Not everyone has rocket boosters attached to their legs when the bell rings. <laughs> are you kidding me? That class was ridiculously boring. Even Miss Valedictorian here was dozing off a bit. <laughs> I do have to admit I was spacing out. And just because I answered one question doesn't mean I'm automatically the valedictorian. Okay, so it wasn't too interesting. But you should at least pay attention when Phillips is talking about the important parts. So you finally admit it. We're finally on the same wavelength. Welcome to the club, Patterson. Please, don't call me by my last name. This isn't the classroom. Never in a million years will we ever see things eye to eye. They're still very close friends, though. <laughs> <laughs> Despite this, they both burst out in laughter. Normally anyone would think that opposites like them wouldn't ever associate with each other, but even though they were so different, their friendship somehow made a lot of sense. Maybe they were just perfect compliments, or personality just didn't dictate the possibility of their friendship. After all, we three had been best friends since preschool. Alright, so where are we heading to first? Cafeteria? I think we can all agree that we're really hungry, especially after hearing about our company's line of deliciously spicy bubblegum. Who would even buy that? I wonder. Me? I would pay good money to get a taste of it. <laughs> you do like spicy food after all. We entered the cafeteria, a bustling room filled with the aromas of different kinds of food. As we got in line, we ordered our meals and chatted freely. Cajun fries and the spicy chicken burger for me. That's my definition of a good meal. Yeah, <laughs> you can tell she really does like spicy food. I'll take a tuna sandwich and some juice. You're probably going to need water or something to curb all that spicy flavor, Suzu. I can't be tamed by the likes of that. If it's spicy, then it's gotta be all or nothing. <laughs> You're crazy! Hell yeah, I'm crazy. I think I'm getting a migraine. I think I'll go with... Uh, well, since we do not choosing between either of them, um, and also none of these really seem like the healthiest options, um, I hate mayonnaise, so I'm definitely not having, and, and I don't eat fish either, so I'm definitely not having the tuna fish sandwich Naomi's having. Spicy chicken burger and Cajun fries sounds good, but I'm not really in the mood for spicy food today, so let's just go with mac and cheese and a soda. That sounds good. Once we got our food, we settled down at one of the empty tables, putting our backpacks aside to finally dig into the food. Suzu leaned back in her chair, tilting it back so that she could rest her feet on the table by her food. Alright then, is there anything we want to talk about? <laughs> Bored already? I know, let's talk about... Say boys, and I will never speak to you ever again. <laughs> Aww, why not? What's so interesting about talking about guys? It's not like any of us are going to get boyfriends anytime soon. <clears throat> Foreshadowing. We don't know that. What if one of us does get a boyfriend? What if it just so happens that one of us happens to get a boyfriend stares at the main character? <laughs> like that's going to happen, Naomi. Look at us. I'm a tiny Italian. You're a ditzy blonde. Hey! No offense. And Anderson here. Well, I guess she could land a boyfriend or girlfriend if she wants. Thank you for leaving that open-ended. I appreciate that. Or girlfriend? She can be a lesbian if she wants. Yeah, it's my choice. Thanks, Suzu. <laughs> True. That's okay, Suzu. I'm not sure I want a boyfriend yet. Why not? It's our senior year. Might as well get a boyfriend. Yeah, it's fun to have the game fully voice acted, and the voice acting is so well done as well. It's just a treat to be able to have. Maybe she's just not interested in a relationship, Suzu. Well, it really wasn't about wanting a relationship, but more that there was no one interesting enough to be in a relationship with. Don't get me wrong, I'm an open person, but there were not many interesting guys in the school to go out with. Who knows? Time will tell. Naomi looked at me, wanting to continue the conversation. However, before she could speak, the speakers in the cafeteria started up and an announcement echoed through the cafeteria. 
Miss Anderson, please come to the main office immediately. Please bring your things with you. Oh my! Looks like our plans have been cut short. The men in white coats have finally come to get you. <laughs> Suzu, don't joke around. What if it's serious? Ah, fine. If something happens, just call us. Hold on to your feels, ladies and gentlemen. This is where the roller coaster begins. <laughs> Funnily enough, something did happen. And it was certainly no laughing matter. Cold. It was really cold. The rain had become heavier that afternoon, accompanied by rolling thunder now and then. The skies had turned dark, and though I couldn't see any of it under uh, the, though I couldn't see any of it under the black umbrella. Not, not that I was, bleh, not that I was looking up. In fact, looking up was the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. I stared at the grass beneath my feet, unable to look up at the people weeping all around me. All I could see was the damp grass underneath my feet. Only the, mon the monotone eulogies that floated through my ears reminded me that I was at a funeral. It was only when the speeches ended that I finally was able to raise my head. A small gathering of people, mostly made of relatives that I didn't even know were related to me, were huddled around a simple, small grave. For a while, all I heard was the sounds of raindrops on umbrellas. If it weren't raining, everything would probably be in a heavy silence. I looked beside me, where my father was standing and holding up a large black umbrella for our small family of three. His face was emotionless, a strange sight next to my weeping mother. I wondered what was going through his mind. After all, etched into the smooth gray tombstone before us was his father's name. So our grandfather has passed away, Harold Anderson, forever in our hearts. My grandfather, the one who raised me like his own daughter, had passed away that day. The ceremony was small, only close family were allowed to come. Slowly, though, people began to leave, leaving my father, mother, and me behind at the grave. A man dressed in a clean black suit under the uniform uh, black umbrella of the funeral attendees walked towards us, introducing himself as grandfather's lawyer. Yeah, I, it's very sad, Eulalia. I promise you it's not, the whole game is not going to be nearly this sad, but unfortunately it starts on a very kind of uh, sad note. <laughs> he pulled out a few documents from his suitcase and began to read aloud its contents. And now, I shall read Harold Anderson's last will and testament. Only my parents and I were allowed to be present for my grandfather's will. It was under the strict request of his lawyer, and there was a reason why. And to my dearest granddaughter, I give my estate. All the furniture and decor that resides within the house shall also be given to my granddaughter. So he left us his mansion, you guys. <laughs> we just inherited grandpa's house. What? I couldn't believe my ears. I'd earned a family estate? At 18? That was impossible, and yet it was written by my own grandfather's hand. He passed the family estate to her? Why am I not surprised? Okay, so this is Mr. Anderson, our father. Um, I can guarantee you you're not going to be fond of him. <laughs> but that's okay, because Mrs. Anderson, the, our mother, is a very sweet woman. Dear. And there she is. There's Mrs. Anderson. Well, did he say anything about what will become of the CEO and chairman position of the Anderson Toys Company? No. It is presumed that the vice chairman will succeed the position. Heh. <laughs> Even to the bitter end, he wouldn't give in. What a stubborn old man. Shaking his head, my father turned to face my mother with a serious expression on his face. About the estate. Should we send her there to get used to the building? It'll be a good place for her to live after high school. Are you sure we should? Why not? This would be a good experience for her. Honey, what do you think? Shocked ellipses. I wasn't really sure what to say. Why did my grandfather think that I was the appropriate heir to the mansion? Was I even ready to live on my own? Well, that seems to be it. We'll be taking our leave, now. I'm sure the little heiress needs some time to adjust. Oh, I sense some salt coming from Dad! David! Really? And just like Naomi, he's out of there! <laughs> yeah, our dad is kind of a tool, Eulalia. <laughs> 
Even though she raised her voice, my dad wordlessly began walking back to the car, disinterested. Don't mind him, honey. I think that your grandfather's passing really affected him. Why don't we get back home for now? You can go on ahead to the car, Mom. I think I need some time alone with Grandpa. Oh, of course. Take all the time you need. She gave me a quick hug and hurried after my dad. I looked around the funeral grounds, which was completely empty, save for the sullen-looking grave that was laid in front of me. I'm sure that Gran if Grandpa were in charge of arranging all this, it would have been much different. It was blatantly obvious that my dad was in charge of the whole event. Who else would bury their own family the same day they pass away? Have you played this game before, Sky Sweet? Everyone knew my grandfather's love for toys, and yet the grave was a mere stone slab on the ground, void of any children's toys. My dad didn't even bother putting flowers. His disdain for my grandfather was almost pitiful. Sorry, Grandpa. I tried to force out some words, but the only thing that came out was a choked sob. He told me to stay strong, but right now I'm the farthest from it. Like that one time, a long time ago. And here we have a flashback. No, yeah. Okay, so you haven't played it before, but yeah, no, he's definitely not the nicest guy in the world. Uh, that is for damn sure. Oh my goodness, my, my mom is sending more puppy pictures! Why are there puppy pictures? Grandpa! Oh, it's so good to see you again, sweetie. I swept into a giant bear hug and we both laughed as he swung me around like an airplane. Yes, that is true. That is true, Sky. That, um... That, uh, everyone processes the grieving process differently. But you'll learn more about, um, about our father, the main character's father, as the game goes on. It was one of my favorite things about seeing my grandfather, the way he greeted me. Unlike my father, my grandfather was loving and playful, even as I grew older. Sorry that Daddy couldn't be here today. He said that he wasn't feeling too good again. It had always been like that. Dad missed every visit to Grandpa's house, citing that he was busy with work or wasn't feeling well. Is that so? Well, that's okay. Daddy can come around next time. And you're here, right? Yeah. So what are we doing today, Grandpa? Mommy says there's a new dessert cafe open in town. Maybe we could go? Oh, I would love to. But I've been so busy with the company these days. We're actually working on a little something. Would you like to see? Yes! Oh, is that a toy? It is. I was designing a new line of them. But I feel like something's missing. You don't think you could help me out, could you? Of course! He placed the toy in my hands with a smile, and I inspected it carefully. It was beautifully crafted, and obviously a lot of work was put into it. There was one thing, though. So, what do you think? Hmm, I think the heart on its chest should light up when you hug it. It'll be like it's alive, and it could be like a little nightlight before you sleep. He stroked his chin, considering my input while nodding his head. After a few moments of silent deliberation, he turned to me with a chuckle. That's a great idea! I'll get to changing it right away. You're always like my little lucky charm, dear. You always know what to add to make the perfect toy. <laughs> well, I hope I can be like you one day, Grandpa. You want to make toys as well? Well, making people happy is the best feeling in the world. I don't know if I want to make toys when I grow up, though. Don't worry too much about it. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. That makes sense. Daddy doesn't think of it the same way, though. Your father. I'm sure he just wants the best for you. I'm not so sure about that. Wait, could we please just point out the fact that this is a little girl thinking that her father does not want what's best for her? Sweetie, look at me. He bent down to look at me at eye level, with a serious look on his face. As much as your father may say something that doesn't make sense now, you must remember that he's always thinking about you. He loves you. There's no doubt about that. And you need to love him just as equally. I don't hate Daddy. I really do love him. I don't know why he's like this, though. Your father and I have had some difficulties with each other in the past. But it's nothing that you should be concerned about. It is cute, isn't it, Eulalia? 
I'd heard tidbits of this from my mother and various other people. The only people who stayed quiet were my father and grandfather. Both of them refrained from saying a word on the subject matter, but it was clear that whatever happened set up a wall between them. It's hard, though, trying to pretend as if nothing were wrong. However, no matter what, you have to stay strong. You're a big girl already, and, well, there'll come a day when it seems like it's you against the world. But always remember that your family and friends will be here with you. Very important theme of this game. Daddy, Mommy, your friends at school, me, we'll stand together to get through it. How can you be so sure of that? Because we'll be right here and here. He pointed his finger to my head first and then pointed at my chest. So stay strong, promise? For a moment he looked almost sad, pleading, but as quickly as it had come, the expression disappeared from his face and he was all smiles once again. Promise. Upon hearing that, Grandpa let out a great burst of laughter and stood up. All right then, enough of that. How about I whip up some special homemade dessert? I know I can't accompany you at that new cafe, but we sure can talk and eat while I cook and do some paperwork. Homemade dessert? I'll race you to the kitchen! Hey, slow down there. I'm not what I used to be. <laughs> yeah, Grandpa was a pretty awesome guy. <laughs> you willed me the very home I love to see you in. Why? Why would you think I would be ready to take it, especially after this? A surge of anger bubbled within me, but I quickly swallowed it. There was no use in getting mad, especially when the person in question was no longer there. I'm sorry. It's hard to stay calm when you've left me with so many questions, especially about what happened between you and Dad. <laughs> what am I doing? Talking to the grave. My vision blurred and I suddenly realized that I was crying. My face heated up and tears rolled down my cheeks. I'll bring you some flowers later. I miss you, Grandpa. I'll try my best to fulfill my promise I gave to you, even if the world might be turned against me. I left the grave, wiping my tears hastily so my parents wouldn't see. Well, it's time to head back home. I'll cook up your favorite lasagna when we get home, okay? Thanks, Mom. However, my dad didn't speak the entire drive home. I wanted to talk to him, but after his moment at the funeral, I wasn't sure if that was a good idea. It's about time we took off those dreary black clothes. Yeah, this is when the father starts getting worse and worse and worse, so hold on your hats, kids! <laughs> Gathering my courage, I decided that then that it was time to talk. Dad, could I ask you something? Go ahead. Why do you want me to move into the estate so soon? I thought I made that rather clear. The college near your grandfather's house is well known for its business program. You are planning to major in business, yes? And this is another big point of contention between the main character and her father. Um, I'm just going to refer to the main character as Anderson. It's easier that way. But um, this is the big point of contention between Anderson and her father is he expects her to take control of the company and as we saw in that flashback that's not necessarily what she wants to do right after you graduate from high school you'll just live there and can easily commute to and from school it's a perfect fit for you but it's so sudden you just decided so quickly right after the funeral uh, don't be so sensitive if you're like that in the real world you'll be crushed I'm just saying that maybe we could talk a bit more about my future. In reply, my father rubbed his temples and sighed quietly. After you graduate from college, you'll work at Anderson Family Toys. I have connections since I am part of the board of directors, so you will be guaranteed a spot. That is what we talked about before, yes? But what if... Stop mumbling! But what if I don't want to work there? Don't be silly. It's the family company. Our company. I'm not just going to hand it over to some incompetent vice chairman. He came closer to me and his face softened. Look, this is all for the best, okay? You may not know it right now, but you will appreciate it later. For some reason, when I heard him say that, something snapped in me. I wasn't exactly sure what it was, but it made me feel so angry. Do you even care that Grandfather passed away? Of course I do. Well, everything seems fine and dandy to you. Things could be better. Excuse me? 
I don't like your tone, young lady. It's not like it's not like nothing even. Uh, bleh, 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 sorry, it's like nothing even happened at all. Like you just ignored the fact that he's no longer here. Do not raise your voice at me. What did he ever do to you to deserve this? My father, his face hardened, crossed his arms and erupted in angry laughter. Ha! <laughs> you sure place him upon a pedestal, like he's some kind of venerated god or something. It makes me sick. Is that it? Are you happy seeing Grandfather dead while everyone was grieving? You were holding yourself back from laughing in everyone's faces? Did you just feel a bit happier seeing him lying in the graveyard? <laughs> a flash of rage crossed his face and he whipped the back of his hand across my cheek. You don't know anything! Running your mouth like somehow you know everything that went on when you're just a little girl that doesn't know how to keep her mouth shut! You did not know my father! You did not know what he was capable of! Is everything alright? What happened? <laughs> Look at her face! She's like, what the fuck?! <laughs> yeah, this is- this is one of the heavier scenes in the game. This is one of the emotionally heavier scenes in the game. Nothing. I'm not hungry. I think I'll just go upstairs. Honey, wait! I quickly turned and ran up the stairs to my room, slamming the door behind me. My breath came in short pans, and for a while I just leaned against the door to my bedroom, eventually sliding down to sit against it. How did things become like this? My cheeks still throbbed, and I tentatively stood up and looked at the mirror to see how it looked. Hopefully it doesn't bruise. <laughs> what am I saying? Tears formed in the corners of my eyes, but I blinked them back rapidly. I couldn't cry for the second time today. I had to be stronger than that. Yes, agreed. No, he should not have slapped her. Uh, I think that my personal view on on uh, Anderson's father is he does truly love his daughter and want what's best for her, but he's not the most emotionally stable guy. Like, he doesn't really know how to show emotion. And he just wants to know that his daughter is in a good, safe place and that his family legacy is in a good, safe place. To the point where he's kind of ignoring really what his daughter wants because he feels like it's for the best. But he really doesn't, he's not thinking about it beyond his own concerns and his own feelings. He's not a terrible guy. He's just not the best father in the world. Are you alright? Your father told me nothing happened, but you know your father. I'm fine. I just lost my appetite. The lasagna's done, though. And I don't want you skipping any meals. Are you sure? Yeah, don't worry about me, Mom. I'll come downstairs later to eat. You're not telling me the whole story. I, I just don't want to eat right now. Please, dear. Tell me what's going on. I wish you would tell me why you're being like this. I wanted to tell her. A part of me was screaming to tell her what Dad had done. At the same time, I knew she couldn't fix anything. Besides, I was moving out regardless. I remained silent, letting the event remain in the past. Well, I'll leave your food on the table if you want to eat it later. Finally, my mom left me alone. It was strange to think that she was only a few inches away from me, only separated by a single wooden door. I really didn't know what to do. I needed to do something, anything, to get my mind off of what just happened. Anything that would be better than thinking anything more about the pain still radiating from my cheek. I was going to move into my grandfather's house tomorrow. I should probably pack my stuff so I would be prepared for tomorrow. Yeah, that was a good idea. I should start packing. I opened the closet, rummaging around for a while before I found two large bags. Pulling them out onto the floor of my room, I then began to empty my drawers and cabinets so that I could bring all my things with me. I didn't have much to bring other than just clothes and some toiletries. It was kind of bizarre that I didn't have many personal belongings. We could see kind of in the background that she has like some books and some stuff, but... It wasn't like my luggage was completely devoid of them, but I certainly didn't have many things in my room that I would miss if I suddenly just left the house. I shook my head to rid myself of those thoughts. If it were going to be my new home, it would have to feel like it. One way or another, I was going to make it a home. You turn the tables on me now, you trap me in the case of hell. I can never escape from you, but baby, that's alright. 
And I believe one of the voice actors uh, for this game sang that song as well. I believe. Don't hold me to that, but I believe so. Just as I was packing my things, my cell phone began ringing and vibrating in my pocket. I slid my phone out of my pocket and answered it while slowly easing myself onto my bed. Who could possibly be calling? Hey, Anderson, you there? Is everything all right? We were worried about you, so we decided to call. Hello? I'm really glad you guys called. My voice managed to come out, though it was only a whisper. What happened? Are you okay? Well... I slowly began to tell them about the funeral that afternoon. A small silence followed and I was done recounting what happened until my relief Naomi finally spoke up. I can't begin to imagine how you must be feeling right now. I'm so sorry. Do you want us to come over right now? No, it's okay. My dad isn't in a good mood, so could we just keep talking on the phone like this? Of course! We'd stay on the phone until the crack of dawn, right, Suzu? Yeah. We're always here if you need us. After all, we wouldn't be the awesome triple threat trio without you, right? <laughs> yeah. Triple threat trio? That sounds like the name of a gang. Yeah, I mean, we're all taking on the world together. <coughs> You've got to sound somewhat scary, or else no one's going to take us seriously. What's with you in naming things? You've got to step up your game, Naomi. Falling behind to the cool kids like Anderson and me. Tsk, tsk. Hey! I'm a cool kid! If anything, I'd say you have to step up your game! <laughs> we chatted cheerfully about all sorts of things. Very soon I had forgotten about the events that day was engaged in a conversation about Naomi's favorite TV show, some program called Herlock. <laughs> Which is obviously a parody off of Sherlock. We all agreed that the actor playing the titular character certainly had a very distinctive look about him with that long overcoat and scarf wrapped around his neck. I believe they are referring to Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> we had many disagreements about who we thought was the coolest character. <laughs> yeah, he has really high cheekbones and his, his eyes are pretty. Though I do have to say I prefer Jatson. As a bonus, his actor is just so sassy. I looked at the clock hanging on the wall and I realized how late it was. Whoa, it's already 1 a.m.? Sorry for keeping you guys up so late. I think I'm going to hit the hay for tonight. I'll see you guys at school tomorrow. I should probably shower and go to bed. I can't believe I stayed up this late just to talk to my friends. But it was really nice. Oh, to the bathroom I go! I took a relaxing shower. Nothing beat hot water and the feeling of being clean. After drying myself, I promptly dressed in my pajamas and crawled into bed. A <sighs> night hot shower after a long day. I'm so glad to finally be in bed. It had been a really long day. I knew that I wasn't wishing for something to change back in class, but I certainly wasn't expecting any of the things that happened today. And I have to go back to school tomorrow. Ugh. I curled up on my side and tightly wrapped the blankets around me. I really wasn't in the mood to be returning to school, but my dad probably would make me go just for the sake of it. It's time to go to sleep. I reached out at the lamp on my nightstand and turned off the lights. Um, okay, so let's save. Um, I'm trying to figure out, like, do we have, okay. I don't want you guys to see those, uh, don't look. Uh, okay, um, so we're going to save for right now. I'm going to end the stream for the moment um, because I have plans with my dad and stuff. I don't know what time I'll be streaming tonight because I have big dinner plans with my dad um oh yeah you know what that's interesting that you that you mentioned that yeah she didn't eat the food that her mom made her actually i mean i would assume at some point she may have gotten i don't know maybe she just really wasn't hungry she had a rough day but um th when we pick up next at some point tonight when i do my stream keep a i'll put my social media stuff in the in the chat for everybody um you can follow me at the gina chew on twitter and i'll tweet out when i'm going to be streaming tonight but when i do we'll pick up with the second day of seduce me and that is when shit is going to get so real and we are going to finally see the meat of what this game is really about this whole part was kind of more about who anderson is as a main character and how she got into the situation that she's going to get into um when we next pick up but thank you guys so much for joining me um i'll be streaming later so uh keep an eye on my Twitter for to see when that's happening and thank you guys so much for watching